very good morning students i hope all of you are doing well so in the today's class we are going to learn about directories so in the last classes we have discussed about how files can be organized and uh, what are the methods so in the today's class we are going to discuss about what exactly the directories are and uh, the different types of directories which are commonly supported by the operating systems so basically directory it's a group of related files the group of uh, files with same functionality can be referred to as a directory these directories they are also referred to as folders in uh, windows operating system but earlier in case of dos and unix operating system these uh, folders they were named as directories remember students directory means it's nothing but a group of related files we get uh, two important features by using the directories suppose uh, if there exist multiple users on a pc each of the user can create his own directory and he can store his files the advantage is that we will get naming freedom it allows the users to give any desired name to the file without uh, worrying about what other users they have given name to the files so it provides naming freedom and uh, the second advantage of uh, directories is it makes uh, sharing of the files very easy because uh, if a user want to share a group of files directly a directory can be shared once uh, the directory is shared all the files that are existing in that directory will be available to other users so that uh, by using directories we get these two advantages first advantage is naming freedom we get and the second advantage is we are going to get the sharing uh, facility it makes sharing of the files very easy students uh, a directory may contain directory sub directories or even it may contain group of files for uh, each present sub directory or for each of the file in the directory the operating system is going to store a set of information so this table shows the different information uh, maintained for each entry in the directory for each of the file the directory entry contains all these fields which are listed out first upon it contains file name as uh, the name itself indicates here the name of the file is stored and uh, the name of the file sometimes it may be of a fixed size or it may be of variable size suppose if you consider dos operating system it allows the uh, file names with only 8 bytes or 8 characters but if you consider windows uh, actually we don't get any limitation on name of the file the file name may contain any number of characters in case of windows operating system and the second field is type and size so in this field we are going to specify the type of the file so in generally we use extension name to indicate the type of the file say for example if you create files in c language by default you are going to get the extension name as .c or if you have assembly language programs you get extension name as .asm so actually the type of the file many of the times it is indicated by the extension names and the second field it contains uh, the size type and size both will be stored here size means uh, the number of bytes occupied by the file on the disk then it contains uh, the location information the location information it indicates where exactly the particular file is stored on the disk the availability of the file on the disk is indicated by the location information it may be either in the form of table or it may contain a linked list of blocks the next uh, we have protection information this field mainly it is concerned with file permissions the user one who has created the file he is referred to as owner of the file the owner of the file can give different uh, file protection or file permissions he can allow other users to read 
his file write his file or execute his file the type of the permissions that owner has given can be stored in the protection information field then next we have open count field this field contains a number that indicates how many processes have opened this particular file during execution of the program or when the operating system is on a particular file might be used by many of the programs right the number of programs currently which have opened the file which are using that particular file will be stored as a count in the field called open count then we have the next field called lock so this is like a single bit field it may be a single bit field to indicate whether the file is being used exclusively by a single program or not means a program can use the file exclusively so to have synchronization while accessing the files a program can specify that uh, it want to use a particular file exclusively in that case the file will be locked and will not be allowed other programs to access the next uh, we can have flags this field it indicates whether the entry in the directory is a directory again it may be a sub directory or it may be a link or even it may be a mounted file so here we use some flags to indicate whether the entry in the directory is a directory itself it may be a sub directory or whether it is uh, a link or whether it is a mounted file then apart from that there will be even some miscellaneous information also which uh, may contain id of the owner it may include uh, the date and time of the file creation or it may be the time on which the file is uh, recently updated that kind of information can be stored in miscellaneous information so these are the different fields we are going to find for each entry in the directory okay students um, in the next topic we are going to learn about the types of the directories supported by different operating systems so basically if you consider directories the directories may be classified into three different types the first one is uh, two level directories we can have two level directories then we can have a tree structured directory and the third one is referred to as a graph directory okay first uh, we are going to discuss about two level directories so just look at the diagram is you can understand what exactly the two level directory means so it contains uh, the master master directory which is like uh, the root directory within that root directory for each of the user separate directories are created and those users can store their files in the corresponding directories so this is uh, referred to as two level directories here there exist a root directory and in the root directory the users can have their directories which can be referred to as user directories so if you look at the diagram we have three users a b and c these users in turn they have created the files with name alpha beta a has created the file with name alpha beta the user b again he has two files with name gamma and alpha and the user c here he is having a single file called calendar so as we have only two levels that's why these directories they are referred to as two level directories so the features of this two level directories can be referred to as the generalizations first one is uh, multi level structure it has multi level structure as uh, shown in the diagram these multi level structures or multi level directories they permit the user to structure his files based on the functionality depending on the functionality of the files the user can structure his files then remember the directory is also referred to as a file 
it is possible to create subdirectories within the directory, right? The directory can also be referred to as a file. And many of the similar operations uh, as that of the file can also be applied on the directory. Say, for example, you can rename the directory. You can copy a directory from one place to other place. You can move the directory like that. You can perform uh, similar kind of operations as that of file even on the directories. You can delete a directory even, right? OK, next, um, we'll get generalized syntax for file access. The generalized syntax uh, allows user to access any files in the file system uh, subject to the constraints uh, imposed by the file protection. So the generalized syntax allows users to access any of the files. OK, here. Uh, we have an example. Uh, here we have multi-level uh, directory structures. And uh, here you just consider the user A. User A he has two subdirectories with name, with name admin and projects. If you consider this user A, he has two subdirectories with name admin and projects. And uh, he also has created a file alpha within his uh, directory itself, right? So now here to access these files, to access the files, we need to specify the path. That is nothing but we can say syntax for accessing the files. Suppose, uh, assume that, assume that user A, he want to access the file alpha. Directly he can specify the name of the file as alpha. User A, Already he is in the directory A, right? If you want to access the file alpha, directly you can name it. But suppose user A, if he want to access this file beta, which is present in the directory projects. In that case, the user A has to specify the path as projects slash beta. It indicates that he want to access the file beta, which is present in the subdirectory projects. So this is how we specify the path name. We'll take one more example, students. If you want to access this main.pgm file. So to access this file from this directory A, the path will be projects slash realtime slash main.pgm. This is how do we specify the syntax for accessing the files. OK, next uh, we have students. A second structure of directories called tree structure. So in case of two level directories, we have seen that only two levels we can have. A root directory with user directories. But here in case of tree structure, if you look at the diagram, here each directory except the root can have exactly one parent directory. Remember, in case of tree structure, Every directory can have one parent directory except the root. So if you look at uh, the user A, he has created subdirectories. But this was not possible in case of two level directories. Here, a user directory can have, again, subdirectories. These subdirectories, in turn, can also have other subdirectories so that uh, we can find the structure of the file system as a tree. That's why it is referred to as tree structure directory. The main advantage of uh, this structure is it provides total separation of different users files and users again themselves, they can create subdirectories to separate out their files based on the functionality. However, the disadvantage, uh, we can't say it's disadvantage, it's a limitation, we can say. Uh, the file sharing becomes a uh, little bit difficult in case if we have a tree structure of uh, directories, okay? So this is uh, all about the tree structure directories. Then students, uh, we have the last uh, directory structure, which is referred to as the graph structure. So in case of uh, tree structure, the limitation was sharing of the files, implementing sharing of the files becomes a little bit difficult. 
uh, how this limitation can be overcome by using uh, the graph structure of directories. Students here, what we do is, uh, for a file which is to be shared, we can provide a link. Just uh, look at the diagram. Here we have two users, say A and B. And uh, assume that the user A has a file beta, right? This file beta, it belongs to the user A. Now, if this file is to be shared by other users, say B, what I can do is in the user B, in the directory B, I can provide a link to this file beta. The advantage is that directly user B will be able to access this file beta by using the link. So actually these links uh, will form a acyclic graph. The links which we provide, they are going to form a cyclic graph. So the advantage of this link is sharing, implementing sharing of uh, files becomes very easy. So now here we can say that in graph structure, a file can have multiple parent directories. Because if you have a share file, that share file will have multiple parent directories. If you look at this diagram itself, the beta file, it has two parent directories. One is projects and other one is B, which is a user directory for user B, right? So this is how we use the graph structure to make sharing of the files simple, okay? Students, this is all about the directories and the directory structures. Hope you have understood the topics. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you, everyone.